Billy's the old school, the old school boxing. This is like where all the great, all the great fighters come from. Joe Frazier, first person to beat Muhammad Ali. Philadelphia has a rich history of boxers, even Rocky Balboa. You know, he was a movie, but that that was just a movie painted on how the people in Philly are. We tough and we never give up. After you're physically in shape, then you have to be mentally prepared. You, then you gotta believe that you can go in there and follow the game plan and get the job done. So I believe it's both. You got you both gotta boxing is 100% mental and 100% physical. <laughs> the best boxers in the world. I'm Danny Swift Garcia, WBC Westway Champion of the World. I'm from Philadelphia, PA. Growing up, I would say my favorite boxer was, I had a few. Um, I like Prince Nassim Hamed. Um, I like Felix Trinidad. I like um, Bernard Hopkins growing up. Roy Jones. Um, Chavez. Um, I was a fan of a lot of boxers, but those are mostly uh, the fighters I looked up to and try to take some of the things out their arsenal and put into my arsenal. As a kid, like I said before, I, I played all sports. I played, I played football, I played basketball, I played ice hockey, I played baseball. Um, I think I even tried soccer one time. And um, when I used to, like when I used to lose on other teams, I used to get mad and I used to blame people. I used to try to fight people. So when I did boxing, it was just one on one, and I couldn't blame nobody. And I always wanted to be the best. So I know in order, in order for me to be the best, I gotta go out there and handle it myself. And that's and that's how it's been my whole career, and that's why I like that's why I chose boxing. It's hot right now, look. You know what I mean? March four, baby, come buy this yellow. Cause chat be dressed in yellow. <laughs> come get this yellow, yellow. Oh, Kiss yeah, this fella. <laughs> <laughs> On the back. On the back. Get that, baby. Yes, G. Come get this yellow green money. This that yellow green money. <laughs> Well, Philly, I think you know Philly's the old school, the old school boxing. This is like where all the great, all the great fighters come from. Joe Frazier, first person to beat Muhammad Ali. We got um, Bernard Hopkins, you know, Magic Taylor. Boxing has a rich history of um, Philadelphia has a rich history of boxers. Even Rocky Balboa, even though he was a movie, but that that was just a movie painted on how the people in Philly are. We tough and we never give up. So uh, man. Philly, I think we just breed the best boxers in the world. It's physically because you have to be physically in shape. You gotta be more. You gotta be more in shape than the average person. So um, after you're physically in shape, then you have to be mentally prepared. You, then you gotta believe that you can go in there and follow the game plan and get the job done. So I believe it's both. You got you both got boxing is 100% mental and 100% physically. My, my main motivation um, when I when I first started boxing, I just you know I, I just wanted to be a world champion. You know the money came with it. You know. Um, but definitely now, you know, I got a daughter, you know, I'm, uh, I'm a family man now. So, yeah, it's definitely my motivation, you know, to go in there, get the job done, get the victory, fight a smart fight, you know, be as safe as I can and, and, and live a great life. I'm a, I'm a competitive person. I never back down from a challenge ever in my life. Um, so, you know, March 4th, I'm fighting, uh, it's a unification fight between two world champions. I'm a world champion, he's, he's a world champion. 
So I never backed down. I always wanted to be the best. I never, I, I was never scared to be great. So um, I like challenges. I'm a competitive person. That's how I've been my whole life. I like proving to the world who well, I'm the best. And, that, and that's what it's all about. <laughs> Yeah, Danny was a good kid. He, he always been like, like he is now. Danny never changed. Money don't change him. You know, he's a true friend. He's a true. He's a, he's a very good son. He was the most important thing about Danny. He was a listener. The most important thing in life is that somebody listen to. If you got a little bit of knowledge, and it's good knowledge, and then you feed it to somebody young, and they suck it up like a sponge. That's what he did. That's why he's here today. Well, pops, he was an amateur boxer when he was young. He's trained in Puerto Rico. Um, he never became a professional, you know. My pop came up the hard way through the streets, but uh, we, you know, we uh, when we walked into the gym when I was ten, um, we walked into the gym. You know, it was either him become a trainer, or continue the street life, or um, or make it sound a world champion. And uh, you know, and we just both of us changed our life around right there and never looked back. After the camp where I just put all these vegetables and uh, fruits and mix them in a blender um, or in a juicer and then I drink it. Yeah, I was feeling I was feeling great doing that. There's only one problem with that. When you stop doing it, your body shuts down. Like you start throwing up, you start getting nauseous. So it happens to me right before a fight. When I fought Robert Guerrero, I juiced the whole camp. Then I got to LA, you know, um, my girl was doing it for me every day. She wasn't around. I just started drinking like regular stuff, like like I was drinking like a soda or iced tea, and my whole my body just went through a crazy withdrawal, and I was just throwing up, like I couldn't get it together. Like a lot of people don't know, I was sick before the Robert Guerrero fight because of the juice, and so I, I gave it up for this fight, man. I just I just stuck to the basics, kept it old school. I'm motivated to open the gym, you know, to the public because. Uh, I was once that kid, you know, who needed somewhere to go after school. You know, boxing saved my life, you know. A lot of kids make a U-turn after school. After school, you go hang out with your friends, you know what I'm saying? You might, you might start, you know, selling drugs or trying to get, you know, you want to look fly. So you might start selling drugs, you know, smoke weed and let it escalate, you know, pills and, and things like that. And that's how you become, you know, addicted get caught up in the wrong things living in the inner city. So I would I opened it up just to give the kids the uh, chance to come come to the gym and um you know don't get caught up give them something to do so they won't get caught up in in bad things. Well I see you know after this fight March 4th, you know, I don't know what excuses they're gonna they're gonna bring to the table with what, what Thurman probably got. From the last time he fought Porter, remember he had caught an accident? And he caught whiplash, whatever he had, they're gonna say that damaged him now. He's gonna say he, his neck was hurting or something. Because every time Danny beat somebody, they don't say Danny Garcia, the greatest fighter ever. They'll say Danny just know how to win. Because they're making this fight seem like if Danny wins, it's just a win. But if Thurman wins, he's the superstar, 147. But we're not going to. He gotta go through this war first. That's what I'm the superstar, right? Yeah, exactly. Danny is a superstar, but I'm just saying, like the boy that people know how to win. No, he don't know how to win. He know how to get the job done. Man, growing up, you know, rap changed so much. You know, I've been through so much generations. It feels like I've been through a lot of generations of rap, actually. Um, you know, because when I was a kid, you know, I used to listen to like Biggie, you know, uh, Tupac, um, and then it changed. Like we went through that. Like uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, what's his What's his name from Atlanta? Lil John. Yeah, Lil John era. We went through Lil John era. <laughs> Man, we went through uh, the Houston era. Like you know, like Paul Wall. Um, then we went, we went through so much errors, man. Like it's crazy. I feel like I, I feel like I'm old compared to these kids. Like, and it, I'm not even that old. But yeah, I, I love hip hop music, man. I've been through. I love it. It's just, it's great.
great. I created it. I created a brand called Latin Goonies, um, like five years ago, because it ain't a gangster. Latin Goonies and gangster. I made it because, you know, I'm I'm a Latin. I come from the streets, and a lot of people think um, Latin Goonies like a hustler, or a street dude. No, I made it. Anybody could be a Latin Goonie. If you're a hardworking Latino and you do your thing, if you're a doctor. You know, if you're a basketball player, if you're a golfer, or whatever, then you're a Langoonie. A Langoonie is basically somebody, a Latin who works hard and is doing his thing. I've been listening to Pandora, to be real. <laughs> nah, I'm messing with you. <laughs> I've listened to my mixtape. I got a, uh, I got a playlist on my mixtape. Probably a little Uzi. Um, but look, my my favorite mixtape, my favorite mixtape is Casino Life too. That's my shit by French Montana. I got it on here. I got the Meagles on here. I got French Montana again, Wave Gods. I got Kodak Black on here. I got uh, Joel Santana. I'm definitely on my mixtapes every day listening to this while I'm running on the treadmill. I would just tell um, anybody who wants to fight, anybody who wants to do anything, I would definitely say just, you know, just take for the first, the first thing is getting in the gym, signing up, you know, making sure everything's right. Um, and then after that, just, you know, listen to your coach, listen to your parents, and, um, and take it one day at a time. Um, as far as being an underdog, you know, it's crazy, man, because I proved myself time and time after again. I think it's a picture that the media gave me. You know, it's just a uh, portrait they painted. That, that's the image they gave me in the sport. You know, every fighter got their image, but I think that's the image they gave me to try to sell me, you know, to make people tune in, like, uh, can the underdog pull it off again, you know? But, um, you know, I know I'm a true champion. I know, I know I'm know i a, um, like I said before, I was an underdog in the Amir Khan fight. I was an underdog in the Lucas Matisse fight. I think they got me as a slight underdog on this fight, and I'm the world champion. But, you know, it is what it is. At the end of the day, like I said before, it's just a bunch of people who don't know what I could do. And that's that's why I gotta go in there and prove, prove to the world why I'm the best, again. In our camp, in our dictionary, is no, we shoulda did this, we shoulda did that. It is no shoulda. It's we gonna do this, we gonna do that. We don't talk like opponents. When somebody asks me a question, we do an interview, because a lot of the reporters, they try to stick you in your face with like an opponent talk. They try to force you to say, if, there is no if, buddy, when? Let's fix that, first of all. If Danny, no, when Danny wins, let's fix that too. When you start talking like an opponent, you become an opponent. Because if fight night is, no, we should have did this, we should have, that's too late for sure. It's too late after that, it's no looking back. It's we're going to do this, we're going to do that. March 4th, Danny will still be the WBC, new WBA at 147. Tune in March 4th, brother, and still undefeated champ of the world, WBC. Danny Garcia, DSG number one. Champ of the world.